today's thought. God has one son without sin, but he never had a son without trial. Spurgeon. Matthew chapter 4 Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulon and Nephilim. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulon and the land of Nephilim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Matthew 4 contains the famous account of Jesus' temptation. In this chapter, the enemy, Satan, came to Jesus and attempted to get Jesus to sin. Although we usually are not a spiritual threat to rate Satan's personal attention to get us to fall, we can relate to Jesus' temptations when our flesh tempts us. We all can learn from Jesus' account with Satan, where our Savior was enticed to do evil. Jesus was tempted when he was physically weak. He fasted for 40 days and nights. Although his body was more vulnerable without having eaten, his spiritual relationship with God was strong. He had previously spent a lot of time in fellowship with God. Our bodies can also be weak from exhaustion, sickness, or trials, but we can still be spiritually resilient, as was the Savior. Temptation came to Jesus. He did not look for it. Although no one deserves trials and tests, they will come to us as they did to God's Son. In all of Jesus' three temptations, he fought off the enemy with the word of God. He did not taunt Satan with simple quips or remind the enemy of his past and future. He ended Satan's testing by quoting and relying on the word of God. We also can fight any temptation to do wrong by doing the same. For a saved person, it is very difficult to have wrong thoughts and have the word of God in the mind at the same time. The darkness of sin and temptation will flee when the light, or God's word, is turned on. The word of God is also known as the two-edged sword in Hebrews 4.12. Knowing it and memorizing it would fill our minds with defenses that, when needed, can be pulled out of the mind's scabbard. Unfortunately, because most do not read and memorize scripture when temptation comes, and they reach for the sword, all they will find is an empty scabbard. Everyone will face a temptation to do things contrary to what God desires them to do, possibly even today. When you meet those challenges, will you fight them as the Son of God did? Or will you fight it with your flesh that cannot win a spiritual battle?
Heavenly Father, thank you for the amazing example of Jesus. When he set aside his rights and abilities in order to be obedient to your word and will. May I keep the eyes of my heart on Christ's earthly example and resist the temptation to act independently of you. Help me depend on you in every eventuality of life, knowing that this is your will for me and brings honor to your name. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.